another AS physics past paper question. This question has nine marks in total. And at first sight, you can see this question looks very complex and uh, scary. But as you will see in a minute, if you just remember basic uh, things about parallel circuits and series circuits, you will be able to solve this question very easily. It will just take one minute to explain the concepts that we will be needing uh, in this question. And then you will see you will solve this question by yourself. The first thing that you need to remember are these two equations. The first is for power, which is equal to current times voltage. And the second equation is Ohm's law V equals IR. These are the only two equations that we will be using to solve these questions. Apart from these two equations, we need to remember some concepts about parallel circuits and series circuits. They are not very uh, difficult to understand. The first thing, let me first of all name these branches. So this top branch, I will call it AB and the second branch, I will call it CD. The first thing that you need to remember about parallel circuits is that the voltage in parallel branches will always be the same. So what I mean is that the voltage across AB, so voltage, the total voltage across AB must be the same as the voltage across CD. Okay, what about current in parallel circuits? We know that current will be divided in each branch. So if we have some current, let's say 10 amps coming from this side, this current will be divided in these branches. Some of the current will go through this top branch and some of the current will go through this bottom branch. Now the way the current is divided actually depends on the resistance of each branch. If for example both branches have equal resistance then the current will be divided equally 5 amps through the top branch, 5 amps through the bottom branch but if the current, if the resistance of the two branches is not equal, the current will be divided accordingly. The branch with a higher resistance will have a small current and the branch with a smaller resistance will have a higher current. So what we need to remember is that current through AB and plus current through let's say CD through the second branch must be equal to current through the battery. So if the battery has some current I, let's call it IB current, which is leaving the battery. So it must be equal to IB. Okay, this was everything about parallel circuits. Now we need two more concepts for series circuits. So similar concepts, one for voltage and one for current, but this time for series circuits. So in the second branch, you can see we have two components, the lamp B, and resistor R2 and they are connected in series. So you need to remember that in series the current in a series circuit will always remain the same. So if there is some current flowing through one component the same current will flow through all the components. So the current through let's say lamp B must be equal to the current through the second resistor which is R2. And the reason is that if you have multiple components connected in series, the same current will flow through all of these components because they are connected in series. But the voltage will be divided actually. You can say that voltage across lamp B and if you add to it the voltage across R2, they will both add up to give you the total voltage in this branch which we call V. C D right so this is VCD is the total voltage across this branch so that's it these are all the concepts that you need to get these nine marks let's start with the first question so we are given voltage and power and it is given that the lamp is operating at its rated voltage we have to find current you can see that we have to use our first equation for power because 24 watts this is power watts is the unit of power and volts is the unit of voltage so we can rearrange this equation for current. Current will be equal to power divided by voltage. Putting in the values, we have 24 watts divided by 12 volts and the answer is 2 amps. So the current in lamp A will be 2 amperes. The second question is, lamp B is rated at 6 volts. When it operates at its rated voltage, the current in it is 3 amps. So if it is operating at its rated voltage, that means the voltage across this lamp must be 6 volts. In this case, the current through this lamp is 3 amps. 
Also, it is given that lamp A and lamp B are connected in a circuit shown below. The values of R1 and R2 are chosen so that both lamps operate at their rated voltage. So if they are both operating at their rated voltage, that means the voltage across this lamp A must be 12 volts and the voltage across B must be 6 volts. The question is state the reading on the voltmeter. So the voltmeter is connected across these points CD and we know that the voltage across CD must be the same as the voltage across AB, right? So the voltage across AB, because there is no other component connected here, it must be the same as the voltage across lamp A, which is 12 volts. So if voltage across AB is 12, that means that the total voltage across CD must also be 12, which will be the reading on this voltmeter. So it is 12 volts. The second question is calculate the resistance of R2. So this guy right here. Now, in order to calculate resistance, we need to use our second equation, which is Ohm's law V equals IR. And we need to rearrange this equation for resistance and resistance must be equal to V divided by I. So you can see that in order to find resistance across the second resistor, we need voltage across the second resistor and we need to divide it by the current through the second resistor. Let's start with the first step. What is voltage across R2? Now we know that the voltage, the total voltage across this branch CD must be equal to the total voltage across AB, which is 12. So we know that VCD must be 12. And we also know that the voltage across these two components, lamp B and the second resistor, if we add their voltages, it must be equal to the total voltage of the branch, right? So I've already explained that if you add the voltage of lamp B and the second resistor, you should get the total voltage. So we already know that the voltage across the second lamp, because it is operating at its rated voltage, is six volts. So six volts across lamp B plus something must be equal to the total voltage across this branch, which is 12. So you can immediately see that this voltage across the second resistor must be six volts. The next thing is, what is the current that is flowing through the second resistor? And I've already explained this, that because these two are connected in series, this three amp, which is flowing through lamp B must also pass through the second resistor because the current in series is always the same. So current is three amperes, voltage is six. You can divide six over three. The next question is calculate the current in R1. So we need to find the current passing through this resistor right here. First of all, let me erase this 10 amps. This was just to give you an example. So it's very easy. The current in branch AB, we know we just calculated it here. It's two amps. So we have two amps coming from this branch and we have three amperes coming from this branch CD, which will flow like this. And both of these three amperes and two amperes will be added at this junction point B and will continue to pass through R1. So this question was very easy. You can just write three amps plus two amps must be equal to five amps. So this is the current through R1. Next question is calculate the potential difference across R1. Again, very simple. The voltage of the battery is 15 volts. And we already know that the voltage that we have across AB is 12 volts, right? We solved it here. Voltage across the, these branches is 12 volts. So if 15 volts battery is producing 15 volts, but the voltage across these branches is 12 volts, that means that the missing volts must be dropping across this resistor R1. So 15 minus 12 gives us three volts. That means that three volts are being dropped across this resistor R1 and the rest, which is 12, is what we are getting as potential difference across these two branches. And last question is calculate the resistance of R1. Okay, this again is very simple. We already have the current across R1. We have the potential difference across R1, which is three. We can use our equation V equals IR to calculate resistance. We have to rearrange this equation for R. It will be V divided by I and voltage is three volts divided by current, which is five amperes and this should give you the value of resistance.